Hello there, this is John V. Software Evangelist Jscape. In one of our previous videos, we taught you how to synchronize a Windows folder with an AWS S3 bucket. This time, we'll show you how to do that with a Linux directory. I'm going to assume you already have a Jscape MFD server agent running on your remote Linux host and that you've set up the agent service and agent trading partner on Jscape MFD server. If you haven't done that yet, just click the links in the description and in the post. Alright, I'm now here in the directory named SyncDIR on my remote Linux host. If you recall, this is the directory we picked to synchronize, also known as the root path, when we configured our agent in the video, How to Install an MFD Server Agent on a Linux Host. Note that there are no files in this directory yet. We'll be populating this later with files from an S3 bucket folder upon synchronization. Speaking of which, here's our Amazon S3 bucket folder named Folder 1. It's found inside the bucket named Jscape John. Notice that there are three files in there. Once we sync this folder with our Linux directory, those files will be copied over there. Let's now head over to our Jscape MFT server instance. If we go to Overview and then the Sessions tab, we can see an agent session for the agent running in our remote Linux host. We can identify that from the IP address of my Linux host, which is found under the client column. In the trading partners module, I also have two trading partners. One for the agent in the Linux host and another for the Amazon S3 bucket. If you don't have an Amazon S3 trading partner on hand yet, I suggest you read the post or watch the video how to connect and upload files to an Amazon S3 trading partner. Read the section, Creating the Amazon S3 trading partner. I provided a link to that in the description or in the post. Let's now proceed to create the trigger that would synchronize specified directories or folders in those two trading partners. Go to the Triggers module and click the Add button. For those who are using Jscape MFT Server version 12.1 and higher, you'll be presented with a Trigger Template dialog where you can choose a template that best describes the workflow you're about to automate. Let's just leave that blank and click OK. Give the trigger a name, for example, Sync Linux Directory with S3 Bucket and then select the current time event type. You may select any event type that suits your needs, but for this example, I'd like this trigger to run at a certain time of the day. That's why I'm using the current time event type. Click next to proceed. In the next screen, you can use the expression builder to build an expression that would define the schedule when this particular trigger should fire. I want this trigger to execute at 8.30 a.m. every day, so I build the expression as shown on the screen. Click Next to proceed. Once you get to the next screen, click the Add button to add a new trigger action and then select Trading Partners Synchronization from the Action drop-down list and then click OK. Let me now walk you through the key settings for this trading partner synchronization action. The first ones you'll encounter are Partner A and Partner B. Usually, Partner A is the source. But because this is a synchronization process, which is a two-way process, the concept of a source and target is irrelevant. Anyway, let's just select our Linux host agent trading partner for Partner A and our Amazon S3 trading partner for Partner B. Next up are Path A and Path B. Path A is the relative path in Partner A that will be involved in the synchronization process and Path B is the relative path on Partner B that Path A will be synchronizing with. Of course, those paths should already exist in the respective trading partners. 
The forward slash in path A simply points to the root folder of our designated root path for the Linux host agent. If you recall, its absolute path on that Linux host is the directory with a path slash home slash ec2-user slash syncdir. For path B, on the other hand, jscape john is just the S3 bucket and folder 1 is just the folder inside that bucket. The next setting we need to specify is the copy condition. This is the condition jscape mft server will use to determine whether to commence copying or synchronizing files each time the predefined schedule of this trigger is up. So if you select different time, jscape mft server will commence copying if it sees that file timestamps on A are different from the ones on B. If you select different size, jscape mft server will commence copying if it sees that file sizes on A are different from the ones on B. And if you select different content, jscape mft server will commence copying if it sees that the content in A is different from the content in B. Let's just choose different time for now. Another setting you need to specify is the synchronization mode. There are four options. There's mirror, where new and modified files from A are copied to B, and redundant files in B will be deleted. There's synchronize, where new and modified files from both paths are copied to each other. There's backup, where all files from A are copied to B. And then there's contribute, where new and modified files from A are copied to B. As you might have guessed, we'll be using synchronize for this example. Lastly, you need to specify the result directory. This is where the results of the synchronization process will be written to. Click OK, and then when you get to the outer screen, drag an arrow from the start output of the workflow node to the trading partner synchronization action node. Click OK to finalize the trigger creation process. While preparing this tutorial, I realized 8.30 a.m. was going to be a pretty long wait. Since this is just an example, I eventually decided to change the trigger condition to 8.01 a.m. As you can see from the screen, it's already 8.03 a.m. That means the trigger has likely already fired. You can verify if in fact a trigger has fired by going to the history tab of the triggers module. And here you can see that our trigger did fire at 8.01 a.m. Now if we look in the sync dir directory in our Linux host, we see that the files from our Amazon S3 bucket folder have indeed been copied over. That's it. Now you know how to configure Jscape MFT server so that you can synchronize a remote Linux folder to an Amazon S3 bucket.